Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. I am super, super excited because we are getting into a new section where we're gonna be talking about input and output. Now, granted, this is a beginner series, so I'm going to give you what you need to know, but this is not going to be a deep dive of all of the details. So hopefully that's a good thing and not a bad thing, but maybe in the future we can do a deep dive. But for now, we're just going to talk about what you need to know for getting input from the console, and then we'll even talk about doing it from files here pretty soon. So input as well as output. Now we're going to start with the concept and then we'll get some practice in the upcoming videos. But first you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so we have been using the C in and C out objects throughout this series, and these allow us to write to the console and read from the console. But I want you to think about this at a more conceptual level. When we are typing into the keyboard, and that keyboard typing goes into a variable, that concept is known as the input stream. We also have the output stream where we take data from our program and output it to the console. So you'll notice with this input output stuff, there's a lot of plumber like terminology. So there's streams of water, there's flushing the stream, all kinds of weird things like that. But it does help to really think about how it works. So let's try to just, Onyx, do you have to drink water? So let's go through some examples where we think about input stream and output stream and what they really mean. So here we have a beautiful keyboard. It's worth thousands. And this sends a sequence of characters to the console. So for example, if you said hello, you can imagine hello being passed through this stream <laughs> into our program. So here is our running program. And then we could take that data and we could output it to some output such as the console. Cool, so when you type, you can think about it as one character at a time going down this tunnel. So if you said hello, you can think of it like this, where it gets H and then it gets E and then L and then L and then O. And these are flowing through this stream. That makes sense and eventually the program's going to get H and it's gonna get all the characters and then the world is happy. But there's one more thing that this is not exactly how it works. It's close, I kinda did that thing where I like teach you wrong and then I change it, which I cannot stand when people do, but I just did that. <laughs> this, this stream goes into an area of memory known as a buffer. So this doesn't go directly into your program, it goes into this collection container. Thing, <laughs> known as a buffer. So this, my friends, is the buffer. So all of our data from the input stream goes into this buffer, and then at periodic times, this buffer, the data inside of it, will go to our program. So the program does not get each character one at a time. It gets sections or chunks of data from the input stream. So once this buffer is ready to go, it'll send that to the program. So I'm kind of running out of space here, but this whole diagram right here, this bottom half, and visualize that being right here. So from the keyboard, it goes into the input stream, gets stored in this buffer, and then at some point this buffer is given to the running program. So I'm gonna clear this off, so make sure you get a visual photo, you know, like take a, take a snapshot. I'm gonna clear it now. The buffer, when it comes to console input, is the console itself. So as you're typing, it fills up in the console and when you press enter, it takes the buffer and sends that to the program. So none of the stuff in that buffer is sent to the program until you hit enter. So that is the indicator to when the program needs to get the data from the buffer. And if you're thinking this is all very fluffy and confusing, I agree, <laughs> but I'm doing my best. So let's just, let's just go with this illustration. I have a good example on how you can think about this. I sometimes go to this water park and there's this kid's playground area, which I totally still use because it's 
super awesome. And they have this giant bucket of water. So they have like this castle thing and you can play on it and stuff. I don't know what, what I'm drawing here, but there's like bridges and like squirt guns and all kinds of cool stuff like that, right? Designed for like six year olds, but it's awesome. And then you have this giant bucket at the top. And I've seen this at a couple of different water parks. And basically they have this bucket being filled with water. And at some point, all of the water is dumped onto poor innocent children at the ground that get pummeled with water and then they go cry and all that stuff. So all these people are waiting for this bucket to fall. Well, the stream here is kind of like the input and this bucket is like the buffer. The buffer will be cleared when it's ready to be dumped on the children. <laughs> In the context of a C++ application, the buffer is cleared when we press enter on the console. So we type in as much as we want through the stream, it fills the buffer, then we're done, we press enter, and that info is dumped to our program. So yeah, that was probably the worst illustration ever, but I have a feeling you probably understand how it works now. Now this concept can be expanded to not only the console, but files. So instead of coming from the console, this data can come from a text file or some kind of configuration file. Basically the same thing. The .txt extension that you often see with files, at least in the context of Mac and Linux, doesn't really mean anything. It's just a convention. On Windows, file extensions actually change how the file is interpreted. Not really a thing in Linux and Mac. So you might be working with a .txt file or you might be working with some other file that just has some other name. More than likely, it's just a file full of text. And just like we have the CN object, we can create our own input object, but instead of getting it from the console, we get it from a file. So CN is an object of the, I think, iStream class. Well, there is another class that we can use called ifstream, input file stream, and we can create our own custom object and we can name whatever we want. It's not already defined for us like cn, so we could call this input. And then we use input just as if it's cn, but we associate it to a particular file. So let's say we have this file over here and it contains like user information, for example. Well, we could just say input, use the extraction operator, the two greater than signs, and store that in some variable. And it works almost identical to CN, but now the data stream is coming from a file. Same thing with output. We can use a custom object from OFStream class, and we can do output and pass some data into it like so. So that is the fundamentals of working with input and output. You have a little bit of a better understanding of how it works in sections. I'm gonna admit, I don't know all the details of this. You could probably tell from my terrible illustrations, but I do get the general concept and I hope you guys do it as well. The main thing you need to understand is that there's custom variables that we can create from these types that we can use to not just output to the console anymore with C in or C out, but now to files. And that's what we're gonna be working on in the next video because we're gonna start beefing out our application, making it a little bit more uh, cool, you know? The cool thing with working with files is that it can store information. Every single time you run a C++ application, it is exactly the same, it starts from scratch. It just follows the compiled code, but we can make it a little bit more dynamic if the application reads data from a file. Right now we're just working with text files, but once you get this concept, I'm sure you could expand the idea of making applications read from files to databases, Excel files, and so forth. So this is the fundamentals. Make sure you get reading from text files down, and then you can learn how to read from all kinds of different files. So hopefully that was a really beautiful introduction to input and output inside of C++. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because I really need your help to, you know, get billions of subs, which I'm working on it. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.